A uh, little side project here. I got my old um, biscuit joiner. This, I bought this in uh, 2000. So I've had this for 16 years just about. And uh, I paid 200 bucks for it. I thought I was buying a good quality one. And it is, don't get me wrong. It's just the fence system on this really sucks. The last time I used it before I you know, started doing this project, smoke came barreling out of the back end here. And I think that maybe the brushes are worn. The only thing is, I haven't used it that much. Let's pull that off. Okay, there it stopped. And uh, it's got a little cover here. And I can see the brushes. There's tons of brush left. So I don't know what happened. Maybe, maybe there was just some crap in there. The other thing that I wanted to do with this was I wanted to get this part off here so I could get at the blade. I want to be able to try to sharpen the blade. Um, I hit a nail with it a long time ago, probably eight years ago, and I've been cutting with it ever since. It cuts, but it's a little bit slow. It bogs down. So I've got a new sharpening belt, a diamond belt for my uh, one-inch belt uh, sander thing. So I'm going to try to get it off and sharpen it up. I've thought about buying a new biscuit joiner, but it's something like that old stapler I've got that jams up. I've got the stapler, it still drives staples. So every time I go to a place that you could buy a new stapler, I say, no, I'm not gonna buy that. I don't need that, I've got a stapler. Sure, it doesn't work that well, but I'm not driving a billion staples. It's like this, I'm not, you know, using this every day. If I was using it every day, it'd be a different story. I would probably get a new one. Okay, so yeah, you can see you can see the blade right there. And there's a couple of very strong springs that I got to release in there back here. I've got snap ring pliers that are there, but just use the tip of them to get in there to get the spring undone. Okay, that's good. You see the very you know, mean-looking blade these things are. It's only got like six teeth, so they're big, chunky carbide ones, too. So what I'll do is I'll get this off, I'll clean it up with lacquer thinner to get the, the resin off the teeth, and then I'll uh, sharpen it up on my thing over there. Okay, I've got grinder edges, but none of them will fit on that, so I'm going to use the old hammer and chisel trick to try to jar that loose. Let's switch to something flatter here. I didn't think it was turning, but it has turned a little bit. There we go. I remember these. People thought, I guess people thought that these were a novelty, but I use these all the time. Whenever I notice that there's resin building up on my blades, I take this out. You can see it's getting pretty worn out. Um, take this out and I quickly clean the blade and it, you know, brings it back to like new. Well, other than it might be a little bit dull. But now I can sharpen it up with my new diamond blade. I could sharpen it before with my diamond sticks, but that takes longer. Uh, the only drawback with the belt is that I have to take it off the saw, but it does a better job really fast, almost effortless. Okay, I got it all cleaned up. I had a look at the damage. It's pretty extensive, actually. Um, I'm, I was thinking originally that I could, you know, just do the face, but it looks like what I'm going to have to do is uh, grind the tips of the teeth just to get rid of uh, the worst of the chipping because, you know, a couple of them are almost flattened. You know, they had the bevel 
completely chipped off. So I'm going to try to sharpen it that way. The only thing when you sharpen that down, you have to sharpen, well, not sharpen, but grind back these anti-kickback pawls right here as well. And it's by the, roughly the same amount. So anyway, here's the setup. It is my one inch belt sander thing. It's got the one inch diamond belt on there. This is a 30 micron belt that equates to about 600 grit and sandpaper, you know, grit size. Uh, I've got one complaint about the belt and that's the join. They use a thicker tape to join it and that creates a hump. And when you're grinding something like this, what it did was shave off the area where the hump is. I took the belt off and I added a piece of tape around the rest of the way uh, on the back of the belt to kind of build it out, which is something I think that they should do anyway. Instead of just putting a strip of tape right there, tape over the whole back of it, and that way you don't have any bump. you got a clean joint and no bump. <laughs> I've got my little table tipped to what looks to be the right amount. It's not critical. And I've got the blade positioned where it looks like it's meeting the face of the belt correctly. I'm just going to make a mark inside here so that when I do rotate it, I'll be able to quickly position it back in the same place and then move it ahead by the same amount. <laughs> probably hear that knocking sound that's the bump in the belt okay that one looks good and boy is that sharp when I get the next one I have to skip one because this one bevels the other way And then to grind the other side, all I need to do is flip the blade over and use the other side of the belt. That way the bevel will be exactly the same as on the other teeth. Okay, I'm pretty happy with how it turned out. I got four of the teeth perfect. The other two still have a little bit chipped off the corner. So what I'm going to do is I've changed it to 90 degrees now and I'm going to do the faces on each tooth a little bit at least to try to get rid of that last little bit of a chip. Now I've got the diamond belt taken off and I put on just a regular uh, sanding belt and I'm going to hit the back of these kickback ball balls here take about a 30 seconds or a sixteenth of an inch off I mentioned this screwdriver before. This is the retract a bit one. Um, I mentioned that I had an older one, and that was the reason why I bought the newer one. I wanted one out here and one in my house because they're very handy. But uh, soon after I bought it, they disappeared off the shelves. And I'm pretty sure that the reason for that is the way this front part here is made is different from the old one, the one I have. The old one is blue, this one's red. The bits slip around. They, uh, This is not metal, this is plastic up here. And if you put a lot of torque on there, the bit will just spin around. So it's still good for, you know, stuff like this. But if you've got to put a lot of torque on there, it's going to just spin around and that's no good. So I take back my recommendation if you see these anywhere. Don't buy them. Okay, time to try it out. I've got a piece of maple here. 
and I'm going to do uh, the end grain and see how it cuts. Uh, I know before it was uh, very difficult to do end grain. Make sure that's in there tight. Um, one thing I didn't have the wrench to tighten the blade up. I used the same method with the driver bit and the hammer. That normally will put quite a lot of torque on something like that, but I want to make sure that I have it tight up against here and start it and plunge it in immediately. Just to make sure that the blade doesn't come loose. I'm not used to how sharp that is and how clean a cut that is. Okay, so as you can see, well worth the effort. Um, I'm going to get the belt and show you what I'm talking about with the bump. Here it is right here. The tape they have on the back is it's not that thick, but it's thick enough to create a problem there. And when the teeth of the blade hit that bump, they scrape all the diamond grit off first. And then I'm concerned that they'll actually cut through the thing because this is so thin. This is paper thin. So like I say, I added a piece of tape. That's just a strip of packing tape to the back. I don't know how long that'll last. Of course, these belts don't last forever. I've already sharpened a couple blades with them, plus that one. And the carbide on that blade seemed to be really hard anyway, so well worth 14 bucks.